He can't control his tongue. He got to talk. He bad mouth people. So bad mouthing people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this church, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. In Tabernacle Press, I'm against anybody talking about any man. You talk about your family members, you talk about your husband, you, you don't even know people. You go and talk about your husband. You talk about your wife to your friends. You need deliverance. Everything happening in your house is on CNN. <laughs> you don't talk to God, but you talk to people. People can help you, it's God that can help you. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the east, for where I come in my help. My help comes from the Lord. No people. They can't help you, they can't assist you, they can't do anything for you. If God does not help you, people can't help you. You carry everything about your family. You are procrastinating, that's why you are problem. The marriage has no peace because there is a there's a talkative person, there's a garrulous person in that house. Everything happening in your eyes is out there. The Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. In this church, you must not talk about another brethren in a bad way. Don't do it. Don't do it at all. Don't start it. Don't promote it. Don't propagate it. Don't convince it. Don't do it. Any church where they talk about one another, that church can move forward. That church will have no power. Because your mouth is leaking anointing. Your mouth is leaking. Don't talk about your brother. Pray for them. People have problems. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. People behave the way they behave because there are issues in their life. And we need to pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of James, James chapter 1, verse 26. James 1, 26. No gossip in this church. No bad party in this church. Don't do it. Don't do it. You want to move forward? Don't do it here. James chapter 1 verse 26 says, If any man among you, you seem to be religious, look at it. I'm bringing up, you say you are spiritual, you are religious, then you are talking about people, you can't control your tongue. You are not. Look at this. James 1 26. If any man among you seems to be religious, seems to be spiritual, I'm bringing up his tongue, but the secret is all art. This man's religion is bad. I'm telling you, you will talk about people and you come here and you come and pray. Who will listen to that prayer? Oh, please, fear me. God can't listen to that. You have talked about your brother and I'm here to pray for him. No, it doesn't work that way. That prayer is vain. That religion is vain. That activity is vain if a minister is a child of God and you are talking about people in a bad way. Your religion is vain. Knowledge is non avoid You use your mouth to nullify your religion. Somebody said, we don't do that in Jesus' name. <laughs> do you know the Bible says, if we are fool, when a fool keep quiet for a while, you will mistake him for the wise. A fool. Some people just got to talk. Why do you have to talk? A church, you have to talk, you have to talk, talk, talk. In quietness. When you see any child of God who is a talkative, such a person is kind. I ask a fellow ground to be broken. Amen. Amen. The last point because of time. Are you being blessed? Yes. The last point for today. When you are easily irritated, when you get angry easily, at slightest provocation, you need revival. 
brethren. When you're always angry over petty things, you are not revived because you are petty. When you are oversensitive, you wear your feelings on your sleeves. You need revival. Easily irritated because your flesh is very much alive. Oh, if you just step on my toe, you are upset. You didn't do it deliberately for God's sake. Forgive and let go. You are always angry. Do you know? Persistent anger that leads to a rot is a poison to your spiritual life. You have to let go. Somebody say, let go. Let go. Let go of that feeling, that awful feeling, that anger, that bitterness. When you don't let go of anger, it gradually takes a root in your life. It takes a hold of you. It becomes bitterness, from bitterness to madness, from madness to hatred, and that is not the will of God. The Bible does not say, don't be hungry. No. It didn't say that. If your hunger is actually genuine, if there's a genuine reason for your hunger, you can be hungry, they don't sin. You can be hungry, they don't let the sun go down on your hunger. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Don't let the sun go down on your hunger. Don't let a day pass without settling that matter, that issue. If you must be revived, you have to break that follow ground. You have to break that follow ground. Don't be soon hungry. In the book of Proverbs 14, verse 17, in the Bible says, He that is so hungry, dinner foolishly. And a man of a great world is foolish. The Bible says that anger dwells in the bosom of fools. Somebody say, I'm not a fool. And that cannot dwell in me. There's no place for anger in me in Jesus' name. Amen. If that is your situation, today God will remind you. Amen. You can't control your hunger. You know, there's some hunger, you just. In fact, the definition of hunger is momentary insanity. At that time, you don't even know what you're doing. And that's why you don't do anything when you're hungry. Don't say a word when you're hungry. Don't let the anger take over control of you. Don't be like a, a broken wall, a spirit without control. Amen. Amen. Somebody says, I will control my hunger. Anger will not control me. In Jesus' name. I think we want one more point about the steps to revival. You need revival in your life. There are steps to take, and I give you maybe one point there. Then we will pray. Steps to revival. I'm giving you who needs revival, people that need to be revived. And I know I need to be revived. You need to be revived. The entire church of God needs revival. Steps to revival. Point number one. First step to revival is repentance. You need to turn away from your wicked ways. You need to break up your fellow ground. Once people who are, who are looking for revival discover their idols and their sins, and before reign of righteousness can fall, they need to separate themselves from their ways, from their idols, from their sins, from their transgression, from their iniquity. 